Mark Molinaro, thank you so much for being here as always. I'm glad to be back with you. Thanks very much. Of course. So there's a lot of buzz in recent weeks about the race for governor. We have Congressman Lee Zeldin, who's already declared you're one of several people considering a run. What's the status on that? Are you going to run for governor next year? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm flattered, certainly. There are a good number of folks who have asked me to consider running again, um, secured more votes uh, and, er, and won more counties uh, in 2018 than any, any challenger since 1994. Um, I've said this consistently, and, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, we are in the what I hope are the last weeks of grappling out of this pandemic, and my responsibility and my, and my role as county executive is, is really my priority. Uh, as as we get past that, uh, I'll be evaluating what what could come next. But I will say, and, and I think you you all know this, and, and your viewers uh, who at least uh, remember me uh, uh, know this as well. I, I truly believe in the ideal of public service. I have seen failures in Albany and in Washington that I think uh, uh, need to be addressed. And I do think that there's a role and responsibility for responsible, honest, earnest people to step forward and serve. There, so so I'm considering what happens next. Uh, but something will happen next. Uh, I just uh, right now I'm focused on on, 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 on on getting shots in arms and helping businesses get back open and kids graduate from high school. There's a the host of responsibilities that we're focused on right now. So you ran in 2018, and I think it's fair to say that next year's race for governor is going to be very different from then, considering everything that's happening with the governor. What do you think Republicans need to do to convince middle-of-the-road voters and Democrats that may have supported the governor in the past to come to your side of the aisle and support a Republican running for governor? Well, listen, clearly any candidate running as a Republican needs to be able to speak to uh, to Democrats and, and moderates and those with no party affiliation in a way that has them trusting and believing that we can competently, fairly, and honestly do the job in a way that represents them too. No election is about the candidate. It rarely is. It's about the voters. And if you want to win, you've got to be sure that we're speaking to honest, hardworking New Yorkers in a way that has them trust we can do the job for them. And if they don't believe it in a state that is overwhelmingly Democratic, if they don't believe it, they're not going to give us the benefit of the doubt or the opportunity. And so if we can speak honestly about how we can solve those problems and, and get people working together to confront them, we have a chance to win. Uh, if we give voters an excuse to not trust us, not believe in us, it's going to be a, an uphill climb. Uh, and believe me, it, I know it's a steep one. So on that theme, we learned this week that New York is losing a seat in Congress because just 89 people weren't counted on the census last year. And it's something that Republicans have talked about for several years, and I think Democrats have as well. We do have an out-migration problem in New York State where people are leaving New York for other states like Texas and Florida. How do you think we should address that moving forward? I think there's a number of it, options, and everybody has different ideas, but I'd like to hear well, from you. Certainly, I appreciate it. And and so we didn't lose a congressional seat because 89 people didn't fill out their census form. We lost a congressional seat because 1.5 million people have decided not to live in New York over the last decade. And the result was confirmed by not having 89 people <laughs> couldn't finish that, that, that census form. And so we know we know what the, we know what the problems are. Uh, we have a, a state government that is too bloated, too broken, and too arrogant. It just is. And the public that's that's leaving feels that they can't afford here. They can't afford to stay here. There aren't housing opportunities for them. The education system isn't what they want for their children. And there, isn't, there, there aren't opportunities enough to grow and to afford to stay. We can provide really important services to those who are living in poverty. We can provide for communities and families that are living in fear because of violence. We can meet people and help them in, uh, in support of housing and those living with disabilities. We can do that efficiently and do it affordably, too. What we've seen these last couple of months is this doubling down on spending more than we should, taxing more than people can afford, and borrowing against our future. That is just not healthy. The state is going to be financially, politically, and socially bankrupt if we don't take, take responsibility uh, and take real leadership in trying to make us affordable, accountable, and create opportunity for New Yorkers. Speaking of being socially bankrupt, there's a conversation happening in Albany right now about ethics reform because of everything that's happening with the governor. And you have spoken in the past about rooting out corruption in government. You were a member of the assembly at one point, and this has just been happening for decades. How do you think yeah. the state should move in terms of trying to root out the corruption in state government that seems to just persist and persist? 
Well, I addressed this at, at 18, and I, and I still have the same belief. Um, first of all, uh, you, you've got to jettison Jacob uh, and create a truly independent ethics commission. It should include a judicial involvement. It has to have uh, the individuals who are not beholden to the administration, as Jacob basically is, and don't have the same uh, you know, ties to other political leaders. It has to have independence. Now, I also would would reestablish a Moreland Commission, and I'd put people like Preet Bharara and others in charge. I said this even at the time. Preet Bharara, uh, Zephyr Teachout. You find some of the some of the most uh, 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 some of the most brilliant minds, whether they agree on things or not. And you engage in a real unearthing uh, and an exposure of the culture of corruption that has continued uh, to paralyze uh, Albany. Uh, steal from taxpayers and benefit uh, elected officials, and you just uh, you just pull pull the layer uh, the, the the veil back layer by layer. But you've got to root it out. You've got to expose it. You've got to shed sunlight on it. And I uh, I said this before. I'd give uh, the commission on on um, uh, uh, open government some teeth too, because you need the ability to use multiple tools to hold elected officials accountable. And having a truly independent ethics committee commission. Having a truly independent J, uh, uh, Moreland Commission to root it out, identify it, bring charges, and having some other oversight uh, and transparency is necessary. Before I let you go, you are president of the New York State County Executives Association. We are, are now more than a year into the COVID-19 pandemic, and counties have really been on the front lines of addressing the crisis, both in terms of testing and now vaccines and just a lot of different things. Tell me how counties are doing right now. We just had the state budget pass. So obviously, uh, you're kind of trying to assess right now how things are going to look moving forward. Yeah, and thanks for noting it. Listen, in this state, county governments are the public health response. The governor can have a briefing anywhere he wants in the state with or without you in attendance, although preferably with you in attendance. Uh, and it's county governments that have to effectuate the idea and the policy. We're focused on getting kids back to school, getting businesses open again, and trying to uh, rebuild the economy in this, in this new world. That's what county governments are focused on. I would tell you, though, we've long passed the time of uh, the governor uh, uh, announcing that you can have, uh, you know, if you're going to have a beer, you have to have uh, food. Uh, a restoration of local decision making uh, is critical. And I just would end by saying that, you know, we've often talked about state mandating county governments do things. We are mandated to be the level of government that makes those choices. The state for decades has said to county governments, based on public health concerns, you make these decisions. Uh, the state stripped that from us, they, they, and the governor assumed those responsibilities. It's long past time the counties be given that responsibility again so that we can make choices that work well within our regions uh, and get uh, and, and certainly uh, provide not only for public health, but for the, but the overall community health. All right, Dutchess County Executive Mark Molinaro, maybe a candidate for governor. We'll see. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.